My name is Phil Oaks, and this is Boris the dog. Oh, I march to the Battle of New Orleans. Phil had what was essential, a stance, six strings, and an insistent voice wanting to be heard. He never went with the mainstream. He always found his own direction. I find it hard to believe that he lost his way because his side won. There's more to it than that. Phil had gone to military school. Left-wing politics was his career. But the thing to remember about Phil Oaks is that what was in his heart was not left-wing politics at all. What was in his heart was John Wayne and Gary Cooper. There's an American mythic tradition of the individual who holds out on the jury. I imagined he was the hero of his own movie. Phil said, I went to New York to become the best songwriter in the country, and then I met Dylan, and I decided I'd be the second best. There was a difference between people who liked Bob Dylan and those who even knew about Phil Oaks. Anyone could like Bob Dylan. There's a whole bunch of people in New York City writing much more advanced kind of songs. Too many martyrs and too many deaths. The thing about Phil was he was totally unequivocal. There were so many awful things that happened in the 60s. It just seemed like one hammer blow after another. I think Phil was a big enough egomaniac to take it all personally. He believed that outraging the country was not the way to go. He said, a demonstration should turn you on, not turn you off. We all sort of got lured into a more pop dream. And that really started to tear him apart. You've got two choices. You either accept the limitations of what you can do and carry on working, or you make no compromise. And I don't think Phil fancied making that compromise. And I guess everybody goes through a certain stage of, of disillusionment. And, and where to go, I don't know.